Okay, well I'm going to put this transaxle back together on the EV. I figured I would show a few things. Supplementing this with a little bit of light because I'm not sure how good this is going to look. On the camera. Alright, so that's where the motor connects. And I just got the motor, it's still in the box. Took it up to a forklift supply uh, that uh, rebuilds motors, in other words. <clears throat> And they do 48 volts, so they looked at this one and tested it all out, and so there was nothing wrong with it. <clears throat> so, it acts like the uh, rear end is just as loose as it can be, so it's kind of an odd uh, feeling. Anyway, I think I mentioned your uh, this is your engagement, Paul, to lock the rear end, and it works off this piece here. And your solenoid is right in here on the other side. So it doesn't even have to take off. And so when there's no power on it, it's in this position off the spring that holds it engaged, which locks it into two-wheel drive. So when you uh, <clears throat> flick it to one-wheel drive, it engages, this pops out, pulls the uh, this ring back. Now, the interesting thing is here's your shim which goes on the back side of this and fits right up against this uh, bearing here. So this is really how you uh, set your preload, I guess you call it preload and backlash. That laying against this uh, edge of this carrier, see how that fits in there, laying down against this edge here, <coughs> holds it up against that bearing which keeps this from coming this way. Now on the other side of this, you've got a similar uh, thing Well, you got your ring gear and you got this bearing on the end of your ring gear. And behind that bearing, you've got some uh, shims and the difference between the shims you have on that side plus this shim here keeps this uh, carrier in the right position, which you know gives you a, pr a proper wear pattern and all that. Of course, that bearing don't just pop off of there takes a little effort so if you uh, actually had to do something like that I can't imagine I looked at the wear marks on mine it looks perfect so uh, right now you just go in here and you put some sealer around this and then uh, you put this back together and torque it back down and that's about it so you have to go in here and clean up all this old sealer around here and you want to go around these holes I guess so at any rate, there's really not much to it. The bearings all look good and all that. And this just lifts right out. All these gears look perfect. And inside of here uh, is all nice and tight. So really don't see a problem at all with the transaxle. And shouldn't at the uh, 130 hour mark. Should still look like new and it does. So whatever this weird issue is with this, it's uh, not in the transaxle even though that's kind of what it felt like. And it felt like there was a lot of play in these axles. Well, they do have a little bit of play right here, but it wasn't the bearings, you know, moving. In other words, it wasn't this part here. It was just the uh, axle inside the spline, which had a little movement. So when you play with it, it really was hard to determine. I thought the bearing itself was moving around. That's what I assumed, but you know, the bearings, they're just fine, so. Just kind of hard to tell at any rate, so we're going to put it back together, put it back in. So at any rate, I've just rigged up a little block and tackle and hook onto this here. And I can set it down with a block and tackle and set it into place. So it's really not the, that hard to do. <clears throat> you wouldn't do it by yourself with one person, so you got to have something. Because this thing here is, I don't know, 90 pounds or whatever it is. Uh, just not something you can set down in there and do it with just one person necessarily. You got to put your bolts in and all that kind of thing. So uh, I just rigged it up with a rope, block and tackle kind of arrangement. Anyway, that's about all I got to say I guess at this point. Everything looks fine. Thanks.